In Matthew chapter 9, it begins with the passage of Jesus healing a paralytic. You see, when Jesus first sees the paralytic, he says, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. You wonder, why did Jesus begin with this statement, calling the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven? Well, to understand this passage, you will need to know that in the Jewish culture, like we see with Job and his friends, the Israelites, they had the understanding that <laughs> bad things happen to you when you're in sin. So this paralytic, whether he was born a paralytic or someone who something happened that caused him to become a paralytic, the Jewish culture would have shunned him and thought him to be a greater sinner than the rest. So even coming up to this man, Jesus knew that this man's greatest longing was for forgiveness of his sins, for righteousness, uh, and he couldn't earn it on his own. So the greatest thing that Jesus could tell him is, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. He can forgive sins. Now, in verse 4, uh, Jesus knows the thoughts of these scribes who are criticizing him. They believe he's blaspheming. And that's true. If it was any other man who says they could forgive sins, <laughs> that would be blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. But in verse 6, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. What a great miracle that it, not only was he healed instantly, he also didn't need to do any physical therapy. Like, I'm going to see a physical therapist tomorrow. And take <laughs> weeks, months of recovery. Uh, imagine this person hasn't moved in years. The muscle would have atrophied and been unable to support him. But God, Jesus, being God, instantaneously created where there was nothing beforehand. And we're just reminded again, he did this to show the people that he can forgive sins, which it seems most of the crowd had missed and did not understand. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word this evening. Thank you for seeing your love for the paralytic, just reminded of how you love and care for him. And Father, would you remind us that you alone can forgive sins, and as you have demonstrated here, help us to cling to you as our hope, as our Lord, as our Savior. There is no other person to worship. There is no other being our other person to live for, except you. So, Father, thank you again for the privilege it is to spend in your word. Would you open our eyes anew to what your word has to say this coming year? We pray and ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.